Trauma care has become very popular in the last few years. If you'd asked the average person that's involved in the gunfighting industry, whether it's an instructor or a student, um, five years ago, how many of them carried tourniquets or other trauma gear? You'd maybe get one or two people, especially more along the uh, lines of the instructors. But now, if you ask that same question, you're going to find that nine out of ten people carry some sort of trauma gear. I'm Peter Burlingame of the Self-Defense Initiative. The three things that we generally think of when we're talking about dealing with severe trauma are tourniquet, a hemostatic agent, and a pressure dressing. Uh, today I'd like to talk about tourniquets, uh, in particular improvised tourniquets. Uh, it's very common to see people with either a cat tourniquet or the uh, soft TW tourniquet, and these are wonderful pieces of gear. Uh, they really do a great job and they're set up for quick use. The problem is they're close to 30 bucks. So the chances of you having one on you, um, you know, if you're on the range, you might have them on you, but uh, is that where you're going to have the accident? Possibly. But, you know, if you think about Boston Marathon or just, you know, recently the Fort Hood shootings, um, you may need uh, a tourniquet in your any everyday life. So, you know, the accident may happen while you're driving along and you see a car accident or it may be a workplace incident, that sort of thing. So are you really going to have a SWAT T or a cat tourniquet on you all the time? And even if you do, how many are you going to carry? Most people will have one at most. And if you, once again, if we look at the Boston Marathon bombing, um, you know, you're going to be able to take care of one person and there may be five or ten that need quick response to slow, slow bleeding. So uh, I'd like to show you an improvised way of using a, um, a triangular bandage for a tourniquet. Now, some of the advantages of the triangular bandage are it's very small, and so it's easy to have in your pocket. It's you know, a lot less bulky than the uh, purpose-made tourniquet. And they're less expensive. You can buy these at uh, you know, any of the major um, uh, big box um, pharmacy type stores like CVS or Walgreens and they're just a few dollars so you can have a bunch of these and have them all around you and having this in your back pocket is pretty simple uh, pretty comfortable having a few in your backpack same thing um, so let's show you how we can use the triangular bandage as a tourniquet now the way to use the triangular bandage for a tourniquet works in a number of different ways with a number, number of different materials. So you could use it uh, not only with the triangular bandage, but also with um, other pieces of cloth, a bandana, or even rope. Um, the first thing we want to do is make a, a loop, and we pass the loop over the extremity. Now, the one thing you want to think about when you're applying tourniquets is you want to put them high and tight. So. The common thinking is you want to be at least two inches above the wound, but arteries can retract. So you may be two inches above the wound and the arteries retracted beyond that. So in general, go as high as you can on the, lo uh, the limb as possible. And put the knot on top of the artery. So the brachial artery is running on inboard of this arm. Once you have these two free ends run through the loop, grab each end in a hand, and now we're going to go in line with the arm and pull apart from each other, and then go 90 degrees, and then you can wrap, and you can see Jesse's not happy, he's very pain resistant, but he's not happy right now with me, and then just tie a square knot to secure it, and you can check perfusion, see how we're doing. And yeah, we've definitely slowed the blood flow down substantially. Now, what if you're boating and you don't have a piece of cloth? You may have some rope. Now, when you're dealing with rope and tourniquets, it's generally frowned on because we don't want to cause a ligature and cause tissue damage. Um, so if I just put a rope around him like this, there's a good chance that we'd cause tissue damage once I crank this down, something we want to avoid. But if we double it up, this is half inch rope, if we double it up, um, 
this way, then we have one inch of width and much less chance of causing damage. So if you use it the same way, double it up, press the free ends through the loop, pull apart from each other, tie your square knot, that'll work also. So there's just some options for you for improvised tourniquets. Um, you may not always have a tourniquet on you when you need one, or you may need more than the one that you are carrying. So uh, just one quick way to use improvised methods of um, making tourniquets. I'm Peter Burlingame of the Self-Defense Initiative. Thanks for watching. Be safe out there.